It may surprise you to learn that drones are flying across America, not the impersonal killing machines that patrol the badlands overseas, but drones nonetheless, used by the FBI, by university researchers, by amateur photographers, even by your nosy neighbors. Domestic drones are poised to become a multi-billion dollar industry, revolutionizing everything from crop management down to the farm to possibly package delivery to your doorstep. The Federal Aviation Administration is trying to figure out the rules of the road for drones, but for the moment, they're barely regulated. Tonight, we offer a quick once-over of just what these gizmos can do. We begin in a park in Austin, Texas. So I'll go ahead and hit record and I'll start flying this for you. Slowly tilt up my camera to reveal the city. We're looking at the future. And then I can, I can spin around us here. And whether we like it or not, the future is looking back at us. And then come right in on us. There you go. And then it's just gonna hang out there until we're done with it. Colin Gwynn is showing us his flying camera, his own squadron of drones. These are definitely not your grandfather's model planes. And then this shows me that I have seven satellites in view. They navigate by GPS signals. This one controlled through a very smart phone. This is a Wi-Fi repeater that the phone only has to talk this far. And then this talks to that. Yeah. Sensors on board tell the drone exactly where it should be and how to get back home. Now, if I take it and I move it over here, and I let go, <laughs> where does it go? It knows where it's supposed to be. So it goes right back to where it's supposed to be. Sophisticated as they are, any idiot can fly one. Now just push up on this one. Up? Just, yep, push up. And let it just, just let it keep going. Just let it keep going. And in the hands of someone who actually knows what they're doing, you can get a bird's eye view of things literally. So say I want to fly right through this hole in the tree. That little gap. So I'm going to bring it down and fly it right back through this hole, right at us. Pilot. Yeah. <laughs> It takes a little practice to be able to, you know, stick them down through areas like that, but and there you go. <laughs> Gwyn saw the potential of drones early on and became an entrepreneur, selling small drones for the consumer market. We thought the people that would be buying them would be just your photographers and your videographers, right? But what's interesting is that people see this thing flying around and they go, man, I'm not really too sure what I'm gonna take aerial photos or video of, but that thing's really cool and I want one. And the pictures they take are often breathtaking. Here, a drone hovers over Niagara Falls, looking straight down. Gadget guys and girls, as Gwyn calls them, have sent drones weaving their way through the leafy avenues of New York's Greenwich Village and through the Grand Canyons of Times Square. And at the other end of the country, they watch the endless summer unfold in Hawaii, the surfer dudes in paradise. Young gadgets for a young crowd. I noticed the average age in this business seems to be somewhere in the in your 20s, say, right? Absolutely. It's definitely a very young business. Increasingly, drones are being used for much more than fun and games. Environmental research, for example. They monitor marine wildlife off the Washington coast. And there are other uses. Anything from a farmer that wants to take a photo every week of his crops to look for hot spots, to know where to not use too much pesticide or where they might need to add more water. They help the Forest Service battle wildfires. They can just monitor it. They can be 200 feet in the air looking at this fire. Where is it moving? There's a ton of environmental uses to fly around after an earthquake or after a flood and see what the damage is and, and you know, who needs help. Indeed, after the 2011 tsunami in Japan damaged a nuclear reactor, drones flew in to measure radiation when it was still too dangerous for humans. And after last year's typhoon in the Philippines, they surveyed the devastation, flying lower than any helicopter or plane could do. 
We have a saying that we build unmanned systems for the four Ds. That's the dirty, dangerous, difficult, and dull missions. Michael Toscano presides over the world's biggest trade show for drones. He heads the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems, which is what he'd prefer you call them. You don't like people calling them drones. Well, drones is a, most people when they hear the word drone, think of something that's military, something that's large, something that's uh, weaponized, th something that's hostile. Uh, and that's not what we're talking about. I'll call them drones. You can call them drones. Come in. You know about us? To the first time visitor, the drone show is part sci-fi, part video extravaganza, and part old fashioned sales pitch reflecting the steady movement of the technology from military to civilian use. The manufacturing of these systems is a whole new industry, so these are new jobs that are being created. The big defense contractors are here, but so are the gadget guys and the software developers who write the code for piloting or simply monitoring unmanned aircraft from the ground. We actually are moving from a Tom Cruise Top Gun persona into the geeky Revenge of the Nerds persona, right? <laughs> we toured the floor with Missy Cummings, a former Navy fighter pilot, now a professor in charge of drone research at both MIT and Duke University. She's become an expert on teaching new drones new tricks. Just give me a sense of how big this industry is as we speak. Most of the dramatic leaps in technology will now be happening in the commercial sphere. We will see small drones that deliver wedding cakes. We will see large drones that deliver your FedEx packages. We will see medium-sized drones that do air quality management. There's something spooky about no windshield. It, it is spooky, right? <laughs> this experimental medevac chopper can be programmed to fly itself if need be. An onboard pilot is optional. This helicopter will take itself off, navigate itself, land itself, and then you will load that injured person in and it will fly it off to the, back to the trauma center all by itself. This kind of helicopter in the future will be how first response missions are done all over the world. So put your styrofoam gadget together. Sure. On the other end of the scale, it takes just a minute or so to assemble the skate, an almost lighter than air drone equipped with night vision. American troops in Afghanistan use it to seek out enemy forces. It weighs... It weighs just about two pounds. Nothing, I would say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> the common denominator in the world of most drones is the camera. Small drones deliver perfect, high-definition pictures. And more sophisticated cameras are able to track vehicles and people from great distances. Looking around the hall, our crew had the sense once again that the future was looking back at them. The issue that really comes to mind is the issue of privacy. I mean, these machines are all peeping toms. All sensors are peeping toms. And so anything that you have that's electronic is a peeping tom. I would say probably your greatest privacy invasion is your cell phone, if not your Facebook account. Yes, there potentially are flying cameras everywhere, except that in many cities, there are cameras everywhere. Cummings and others argue that, like it or not, we live in a surveillance society, and that using a drone for pictures is no different than using high-powered binoculars or telephoto lenses. Others aren't so sure. The privacy uh, concerns are very, very major. Diane Feinstein is chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee which oversees spying at home and abroad. She's a defender of the NSA's controversial telephone tracking, but is troubled by the proliferation of drones over America. This is a whole new world now, and it has many complications. And the question is, how does it all get sorted out? What is an appropriate law enforcement use for a drone. When do you have to have a warrant? When don't you have to have a warrant? What's the appropriate governmental use for a drone? A recent government report says the FBI has been using small drones in very limited circumstances for the last seven years to track suspects and photograph crime scenes. Customs and Border Protection, which operates unarmed predator drones along the border, has flown them on behalf of other law enforcement agencies hundreds of times in recent years. When is 
a drone picture a benefit to society? When does it become stalking? When does it invade privacy? How close to a home can a drone go? For Feinstein, it's not a hypothetical question. I'm in my home, and there's a demonstration out front, and I go to peek out the window, and there's a drone facing me. <laughs> well, whoever was running it turned it around quickly, and it crashed. The demonstrators who were protesting government surveillance say it wasn't a drone, just a toy helicopter. But as questions about their use loom larger, camera drones are getting smaller. There's one that looks like a hummingbird, another that flaps its wings like a dragonfly. Once this genie's out of the bottle, how do you stop this? Well, it's going to have to come through regulation, perhaps regulation of size and type uh, for private use. Secondly, some certification of the person that's going to operate it, and then some specific regulation on the kinds of uses it can be put to. Feinstein Council is going slow on drone development. Drone advocates right think there. the process is moving too slowly, especially since the machines are already out there in the marketplace. The governments don't just get to have drones now. Your everyday person can go buy a drone on the Internet. Well, I find that scary, quite honestly. A little scary, you know, and I'm always worried that my students are trying to fly a drone over to my office window and peek in on me and see what I'm doing. But I'm willing to accept the possible negative consequences of the technology because it's revolutionizing science and technology in a way that, particularly in the aerospace industry, we have not seen in 25 years. So when will a drone be at your front door? It makes for great fun on YouTube videos, as in this spoof from Netflix. But the idea of Amazon or FedEx or indeed Domino's doing home deliveries in the next couple of years is just pizza pie in the sky. There are too many issues of privacy, safety, and liability to work out. In the meantime, time and technology wait for no one. What do you see in reality is the future of these devices? I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, one in five people own some kind of small flying camera that they can use to take aerial photos and videos with. You know, and that's a lot of people. And as with any technology, new uses tend to pop up that nobody could foresee. On our Sunday in the park with drones, we discovered that man never needs to exercise the dog again just sick the drones on him. With Patrice King Brown, Stacy Smith, Chief Meteorologist Jeff Rosella, and Bob Papieni on sports. This is Kitty K TV News in high definition. It is coming once again. Allegheny County is set to begin reassessing all of the properties in the county beginning next week. But is the county's new high-tech way to assess your property value in invasion of your privacy. Well, this time around, you will not only be assessed on the ground, but also from the air. The county is using sophisticated aerial photography and computer technology to assess your home. KD investigator Andy Sheehan had a first-hand look at this new eye in the sky. Tell us about this, Andy. Well, Patrice, some may argue that Big Brother is watching over us, but the county says these aerial photographs will give it reliable information so the assessments are fair and everyone pays their fair share. In retirement, George Gensimer takes good care of his home, but is bracing himself for the arrival of assessment workers here in Monroeville next week. Well, I don't like it. But this time around, data collectors will not only be coming on the ground, but from the air as well. In recent flyovers, a county-hired firm has photographed all 572,000 properties from several angles, allowing assessors to trace the length and width of each structure and property line and determine their square footage. I'm talking about, you know, a tenth of an acre. The county says the aerial mapping is a money saver. Even at close to $400,000, the county says it will save itself the expense of data collectors on the ground measuring each property. Plus, planes have the added advantage of not having to ask permission of the property owners to fly over their houses. In the last court-ordered court reassessment, one out of five property owners said, you're not permitted on my property. Fine, we won't come on your property. 
but we're still going to assess the property. All properties are being photographed from at least five different angles, making it hard for some to try to get a lower assessment by hiding newly added assets such as a swimming pool, deck, or in this case, a new sun porch. It's hard to argue with the photograph. But the county also rejects cries of Big Brother watching over us, saying accurate information provides for equality in assessments and makes sure everyone is paying their fair share of taxes. We have a responsibility, we have a duty to assess the property correctly. You know, if there's a, a deck, a swimming pool in the backyard, air conditioner units, uh, we'll be able to verify information. And even George Gensimer agrees. But you don't mind a plane flying over and taking pictures of your house? No, I hope, I hope they do it right. That's all I say. Now, data collection workers will begin verifying that aerial information next week with all that verification to be done by the end of this year and the new assessments going out by January 2012. Reporting live downtown, Andy Sheehan, KDK TV News. All right, Andy, thank you. Property owners are getting their tax assessments in the mail this week, and for dozens of wealthy property owners, there's reason to celebrate. The KDK